vice president, and then budget review, and we'll start with Mike and, and public works. So welcome and thank you. Thank you. Where would you like to take us this evening? Uh, your journey through your well. First off, I would uh, I would like to uh, recognize Deputy Director Steve Buckley here tonight. Uh, he is uh, not new to the town, and he's his post as a GIS person for the last five years, but certainly new to his directorship and uh, did a lot of work uh, with me on the on the budget. So I appreciate his his efforts. Um, I guess probably the the way to proceed is to uh, we'll we'll take a look at the operational budget if that's okay, and and that's we'll just move along and. Uh, I guess I don't have uh, the, the the budget as it is uh, represents a, uh, a a net decrease uh, of 0.04 percent. Amazing! Um, <laughs> really, thank you. It's really amazing. You did a great job. Well, I, I, again, you know, it, it, it's interesting. We we uh, we had a, a huge a huge windfall this year with the with the LED streetlight project that'll be coming online. That'll be starting in May. Uh, and that is a capital project in this year's in this year's uh, budget. So that is uh, that's that's the majority of the of the savings of about one hundred and five dollars. Uh, the rest of it. One hundred five thousand. Uh, excuse me. Yes. A <laughs> couple zeros. Yeah. Just yeah. Zeros. It's, yeah. yeah. One hundred and five thousand uh, dollars. And then the rest of uh, the, the the changes to the budget are. Uh, uh, Steve spent a lot of time working directly with staff to uh, to ascertain their needs and really get down to uh, to, uh, to a good solid budget with that. Um, we will be able to have uh, in the next upcoming year some 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 more savings uh, with a with a phase two project of the LED that I'm proposing. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, the only other thing I have to say about the operational budget prior to uh, opening it up to any questions you might have. Uh, that that hundred and five thousand dollars savings is is a uh, is, is a big number, and Steve and I were talking with a few other staff, and and it's it's interesting that we have that, and I think that's probably as we look at the overall budget, uh, future future savings in the budgets are going to be much smaller increments. Uh, this was probably the last big slam dunk of of, uh, of, of a project. Um, to give you an idea, just uh, of, of the, the magnitude that we're talking about for future savings, or for, or for things that we're in the midst of doing right now, uh, we're currently working with uh, South Portland and also Saco, um, and we're trying to find efficiencies. Uh, one of the one of the things that we've initiated is a conversation with our contractor, uh, Pine Tree Waste to talk about a regional collection approach so that we don't have these artificial boundaries. Uh, an example is, uh, you know, the, the, the truck that picks up on Highland Avenue in Scarborough has to stop at the border of South Portland and turn around and come back and, and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So we're engaging um, Pine Tree on, on what it might look like if we were to, to go to a regional approach. And you know the, the, the savings aren't going to be huge, but I think those are the sorts of things that you're going to see. And, the, and, that, and, and I think a bigger value uh, to a project like that is that it, it sets us up for future uh, savings as, as labor and equipment becomes even that much more expensive and hard to come by and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, that's uh, it's pretty much my, my, my thoughts on the budget. We've uh, we've done a good solid budget here, I think, <coughs> and uh, uh, we're, we're, we're very pleased with it and very proud to present it. So I guess if there's any questions on the operational and things, I'd certainly be willing to take them. Okay, I mean, yeah, great job. I mean, impressive. I mean, every year your budgets are impressive. Can you talk? I'm still a little. What was the savings on the LOD? What generated the savings that you've got? Here? Two. Yep. Yeah, uh, two things. We we uh, so first phase of the project that we're doing right now uh, is going to purchase the asset, the light asset from uh, CMP. Uh, we will then convert those over to an LED fixture. So there's two things. There's there's the leasing of the fixture that, that has a, a monthly cost associated with it, and then there's also the electricity. So you're taking a 300-watt bulb and you're bringing it down to a 30-watt bulb, so the electricity uh, will be less and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a two-part two part, um, two part savings. Uh, we have the capability to maintain those lights in-house. Uh, we've, we've invested in some of our staff. They have uh, IMSA, International uh, Municipal S S Signal Association, training on street lights. So they're certified to work on them. So, uh, you know, we, we are going to, uh, we're, we're going to get into the street light business. We're already in the traffic light business, so we might as well get into the street light business too. So real quick follow up on that one, if I could. Um, does that mean that I know right now we pay a monthly fee to CMP? It's just a flat rate. This is going to allow us to go to a metered approach, right? 
The setup that we will be that we'll be implementing with this is is uh, is going to give us the ability. Uh, it's going to give us meter grade uh, readings. Yep. However, right now, what we'll be paying on is if it's a 30 watt LED, we'll be paying for the I think it's 2,400 hours on an annual basis um, of, of of a 30 watt bulb. Even even if we're even if we turn that bulb down. But eventually, after a couple of years, and we have the data, and other communities do as well, we'll be able to go to the PUC hopefully and say, "Hey, we want to we want to be charged on the electricity, usage, not right. on the usage." So, okay. and just keep in mind, I think it's about a four, three to four and five year payback on that mm -hmm. investment to buy the asset and then to yeah. uh, convert. Uh, in the out years, that's savings to the bottom line, obviously. So, uh, I'm really pleased we've advanced that project. Did you, did you incorporate the metered savings into that, or did you? Is that just purely operational? And just based on the numbers, Pure, that, purely uh, operational, and we actually, like I said, there's there's some additional money in there for f that that will, could come out if phase two is done. Those those are for those hangover costs of additional electricity while we're transitioning yeah. in that. So and just two other points: the LED lights, their longevity is orders of magnitude longer mm -hmm. than the conventional lights. Plus, I think there's a value in the responsiveness. We'll be able to respond. Much more timely than CMP. I'm not necessarily <laughs> criticizing them, but it takes weeks and months yeah. and years in some cases to get a simple street light service. So, really? Yeah. yeah. And we're not paying for lights that aren't working either. So. And we do, yeah. Uh, whether it's burning or not, we pay a, an annual lease yeah. rate. So, we're really pleased to advance that. Um, uh, just a final point uh, the, th the first three lights we're putting in, um, probably within the next four to six weeks. Yep. Yep. Uh, one will be at the Nunsuch River Brewery, which is an area mm -hmm. that this council has talked about in terms of parking, and uh, so we hope to that will be burning bright, and people will appreciate uh, the value at that location for sure. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. So I, I've got some operational yeah. questions. Um, most of these are pretty benign, I think, and I'm sure you'll be able to rip these off right off the top of your head. Um, so uh, first one is, how is it that you have and, and, and I, I am also very admirable. My concern is usually on the other side of things. From transportation, when we start cutting payment budgets to get down to numbers, I'm more concerned with long-term infrastructure costs and, you know, pay me later versus pay me now kind of thing. So, Absolutely. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not criticizing anything here because it's not here. I'm more concerned of are we foregoing needed services in order to make the bottom line look good. So how is it that we have zero other costs? I don't even know really what goes into that bucket, but um, I noticed that was an interesting, uh, I, I think that was one of the only departments that I saw. I think that had that. And maybe that's just simply an accounting thing for Ruth of, yeah, it is. What, what, what goes in that bucket, what doesn't. It's other costs are things that don't fit into a regular budget. Gotcha. Grouping, it just means that they fit all of their requests into the into these other categories yeah. Yeah. Into these categories yeah. okay okay um, <coughs> and the supply line your supply line was go we did go down quite a bit what drove that that reduction in supplies $102,000 reduction this year in supplies or $102,000 reduction on the proposed versus the budget for this year that's all street light. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, that's that, that's the street light. We we budgeted 185,000, and we 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 reduced that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, this is a GIS question. I've gone on several different times from several different browsers. I can never get the thing to work. So I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's just the maps don't load. But I always get this error that says the files don't load or something doesn't load. So I don't know if it if it is just me. Then I will. Uh, where are you trying to access it from? Uh, usually from a laptop or a, or a desktop, and it's usually, I tried the Chrome browser, I've tried an Internet Explorer browser, and both times I get similar messages. Is this uh, your place of work or internet? Work and home, yeah, well. Uh, I know that there are some businesses out there who have firewalls that have prevented them from, from accessing it. Um, yep. I don't know about at home. Um, okay. If you uh, speak with Michael Warnock, he's now the GIS person here, should be able to help you with that. Well, certainly your, your Chromebook doesn't have such filters, so you should be able to access it using yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it with that one. Um, uh, tree trimming. What are, you, what are we doing for tree trimming in public works? What are we trimming? We're not trimming off lines, are we? Or trimming away from power lines? Or 
what, we, what, what tree services are we providing for public works? Uh, we actually do quite a bit of uh, tree cutting for clearance, so 13.6 13, mm -hmm. 13, above the deck, 13 feet 6 inches above the deck. Okay. We do full tree removals. We have uh, we have a couple of uh, utility arborists on on uh, that we've that we've trained, and so they are able to <clears throat> safely take down trees, that sort of thing. We have a tree truck and a and a okay. chipper, as you know, and, uh, and that sort of thing. But uh, we we don't we don't work near primaries and secondaries. Okay. Uh, we have a good relationship with CMP. They actually are very responsive uh, when when we give them a call. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I, I just read the top top of that and thought. You know, windstorms and things like that. I'm thinking power lines, but okay, that makes that makes sense. But um, actually, a lot of the uh, the reason that we had a quicker response to the last windstorm than other places is because we. We're proactive about we, it. We, well, we're proactive about it, and then also we partner up with CMP during those storms. We say, hey, you, you get them away from the unsafe lines, we'll take it from there so you can move on. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. that's a, it's a partnership that we've worked on for the last five or seven years, and it works quite well. Okay. The other thing I was interested with that, it's also for getting getting sunlight on roadways. That helps with winter maintenance wow. mm -hmm. big time and, yes. and drainage in certain cases. So yep. mm -hmm. uh, I think it does pay dividends uh, mm -hmm. making that effort. Okay. Um, looking through the fleet maintenance, uh, there was a fleet, fleet maintenance list exhibit 6A tab 9. Um, just real quick, some of those vehicles had a value of zero. I, I'm, and again, that's more of an accounting thing I know. Um, I would imagine that's what you depreciate them out to. The value? Yeah. But there were some, some I, I thought I saw some newer models that were still at zero. But. The rate, is, is, it, is it the rate that you're talking about? No, if you look at, when we're looking at the spreadsheet, you've got value. Last, uh, second so column to the last. So the cars, so police. So, so, and and it, it's more of just an accounting thing. It's not a question necessarily for public works. It's just the, I know some vehicles have the, look like they have the full value and they're older vehicles, but some of the vehicles were zeroed out. And I don't know if some were leased, some were purchased, or what the, whether that even plays in any of our calculations or, or what it's doing. Are these older? Those are this community services equipment. This is me, and we are. We have no value at all on all. Yeah, we. See, I see what you mean. Um, certain of the community service the, uh, equipment. It's snow blowers. These are yeah. not high. Uh, so I, it may be that they're old enough that they're f depreciated out, frankly. Um, it only cost $1,000 in the first instance, so. Yeah. Okay. We do have our fixed asset person here. Can Gina or Ruth answer that question? It seems like most of the vehicles that are 2008 or older or 2005 and older have zero yeah this truly is a function for our audit in terms mm -hmm. of our, our balance sheet mm -hmm. uh, we do have to fix uh, provide fixed asset inventory mm -hmm. uh, to put the de depreciation schedule so uh, I think it's a function of that yeah, I, I believe this information came from from our department and we don't necessarily keep track of of the costs I would leave that up to the finance department yeah right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, no, and I, I, yeah. no, I know it's, it, this is our data, so it's... Uh, I, I completely understand that. I'm just thinking, you know, from a public perspective, somebody looks at, you know, a chief's truck and it's $40,000, um, but it's, you know, it's an older vehicle, but right next to it is a police bike that's 2014, it's got zero value to it, so it's, I, I, I don't know what the, what that's, what we're showing, if we're showing the actual value or the depreciated value or what it's worth or what the replacement value is, or it's just... Sounds like we need to clean up this equipment list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Um, paint booth. What happened with the paint booth? Did paint booth we close the paint booth? Is research op operations for reopening the existing paint booth. What happened? When we went to the uh, vehicle replacement schedule we're now under about uh, 12, 15, 12 years ago now. Uh, at that time we before prior to that we had a full time body man that was doing nothing but rust repair uh, and that sort of thing. Um, obviously, when we went to a replacement schedule, there had to be uh, obviously some savings on the other end. We shut the paint booth down. Uh, we actually do have uh, some folks, our fabricator is capable of using it, uh, but not to the level of an auto body um, technician, I guess I would say, uh, a painter. 
Uh, as you know, we've gone into the into the end of uh, with, with doing contracted vehicle maintenance services. Uh, this seems to me like it could possibly be a, a natural outgrowth of that. Uh, you know, as an example, there are uh, my plow trucks, for example, halfway through their 16-year life, they'll get a sandblasting and a, and a, uh, a, a, a black coating, a coating underneath them, and uh, we actually contract that out now. We get good pricing on it. But, uh, you know, certainly if I'm doing it, other municipalities need it and that sort of thing. So um, that's, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a facility that is, is not, uh, not going to rot and not going to cause any problems uh, as far as that goes. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful facility and it should be used if it, if it makes sense. And I think we can, we can make that work. So it, it obviously there's a need not just with our fleet but for work we're doing with other municipalities for additional revenue for contract, additional yep. contract work or something. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we propose building a new one from scratch, but the fact is it was built yeah. before yeah. this yeah. equipment replacement yeah. schedule. And I guess the, the lesson for us is that our uh, replacement schedule, there were some questions last night at the public meeting, the neighborhood meeting, um, it's really designed around uh, moving vehicles out of our hands uh, before they start to cost us. Um, and we've got some pretty good data. Steven's actually done some really extensive analysis on the, uh, the plow fleet, um, really understanding where's that break point? Where are we really starting to plow some money into these, pardon the pun, mm -hmm. into these vehicles? Um, so because we move them along sooner, we're not having to do the rust repair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think if it's, if, it's a, if it's a good ROI and we've got the facility already in place, then to me that's, it should be fairly easy to resurrect that, bring it back, and I mean, if, if it means, it might not be the plow trucks, but if we get an extra four or five years out of a pickup truck or something, yep. you know, so be it. Um, you already touched on, uh, well, a little bit. So the LED, um, with the LED replacements, what impact is that gonna have on us longer term for personnel and equipment? Obviously, you have to have some kind of training, right? Well, we, 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 have, uh, we have the staff trained already. Yeah, okay. We have a bucket truck. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about, uh, for the first 10 years, certainly, though anything that happens is warranted. Okay. Uh, re re real, realistically, the only time we will be doing anything with those is if, uh, if it's in a crash scenario and someone takes the pole down. Yeah. Uh, we'll be getting reimbursed for, for our work doing that yeah. and, uh, and that sort of thing. So. Um, you know these things are these, these things are very very reliable, and I don't see that it's going to be a so it's not a heavy lift. Okay. With the staff that we have currently. Okay. All right. Um, I know what this is from transportation, but maybe you can uh, address this for the general public. What's adaptive traffic control, and why do we need it? Well, if you can if you can hold on to the CIP, I'm sure Stephen can uh, can fully okay. explain to you a little bit about okay. that because it's uh, it's really really exciting technology. I, I, I agree. I just wanted it to come it's out. A little really bit. really cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, supplies. We already talked about that. Um, last one. Um, when you touched on this a little bit with solid waste with pine tree, any chance or any potential in the future to bring that service in house under our umbrella rather than outsourcing? Because it just doesn't make sense. Well, that is that is just one of those services yeah. that uh, they do one thing and they do one thing really well, yeah. and and I think that uh, uh, if anything, even more municipalities are going away from doing it in house. Right. Okay. Um, and and again, because because uh, you know uh, we we need a we, we essentially need a truck and a half to do our town, so if we need a truck and a half. We've got to have two trucks, and you know that sort of thing. But if they if if you've got multiple communities and you can spread those resources out over, make it, and, and that sort of thing. So it's just efficiencies and uh, of, of routes and, and, and equipment and that sort of thing. And they're high value uh, pieces of equipment. Oh, yeah. I, right. I couldn't even hazard a guess, but uh, yep. you'd shudder at the price, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm just looking at the you know 1.32 million in contracted services and, and services and charges altogether. I'm sure somebody in the community will look at that and go, that's a lot of money. Can We must be able to do that cheaper and better and faster. But well, good I, I don't necessarily, I, I mean, I concur with you, I don't, I, yeah. buying equipment and then having staff, and I, I don't necessarily think that's the case. But. And, and that number is actually about 300000 less than it was four years ago because of the fact that we no longer have tipping fees at EcoMain and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and again, I, I, it, it's, uh, it, it's the efficiencies that, that we're going to, that we're going to gain by thinking outside of the box with regional regional approaches and that sort of thing. Yep. So, yep. We could talk about different ways to pay for it through a user fee system, but uh, we've been down that road <laughs> yeah, and it didn't go so well. Uh, so, 
We've well, decided we, not to advance that. Well, we've heard it from many different people. We're going to have to make some, you know, we may have to make some decisions. So, you know, what, what, what's on the table is on the table. So it's always new again. That's, that's exactly right. right. <laughs> exactly right. So, two um, quick, yeah, that, no, I'm, I'm good. good. Thank two you. two quick it. questions, just just to check in on on the first page, page sixty-seven, the, the colorful graphics. Just kind of sparked to say revenue from non-town vehicle service was two hundred four. Is that a margin for us? We break it even. We make it money. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's gross revenue, is not net, right? It is gross, yeah. Yes. Gross revenues, but we, we, I mean, our, our one concern we had does that cover or more than cover our costs? So, well, uh, getting the twenty percent, that was uh, my revenue bit was going to be next, but um, I can go into that. We're, we're getting tw about twenty-one percent over margin. What? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, and then one other question, just, just as we think about on, on page seventy. On your bullets, on your budget drivers, I was just curious what drove the comment, increased level service demands from the public. What is what is that referring to? What 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 is the public demanding? They demand well, well the, I mean, I'm sure they demand a lot of things, but yeah, aside but, from mailboxes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's but a, this level of service is not gonna demand be going. Well, I, we Probably, uh, maybe uh, all, all of the departments. I'll, I'll speak just about mine. But we, we probably are, are a victim of our own success. We try to we try, we try to provide good service, and we try to take it to the next level on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And an example, uh, an example today, we're doing we're doing uh, roadside sweeping, so we're doing our full crew sweeping on the sidewalks and that sort of thing. And uh, we had people, we, we had a couple of residents call that you know were not. Quite pleased with the with the with the amount of sweeping that we did on in, in their area, specifically on their front lawn, which is actually the town's right of way. Uh, although we did sweep it, uh, it wasn't swept maybe to their standards and that sort of thing. So, uh, it, and and that and that's 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 I I think people today are becoming more savvier consumers. They want as much for their dollar, and that's not just in this town; it's every place. It's myself included. Um, and so I guess we need to be vigilant about that. We need to provide a good service, but 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 a reasonable service. And and I think that's honestly what I meant by that. But is it a, is it a significant driver, or just just kind of a heads up that it's? Well, uh, I mean it, it's. I mean it's it's a heads up. I mean you know there 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 I'm sure there are other communities that go and pull pull the keys out of catch basins when when people drop them in the, in there and that sort of thing. And and but that's. You know, the, the the people of Scarborough provide us with good equipment and good facility, and we try to give good service. Yeah. And I think that's a reasonable trade. You guys do a great job. You do. Um, the fix it app is that is that uh, seen an uptick? Are we getting more usage out of that, or are we kind of leveling off a little bit? I know we when we first introduced it, it was taken off like like gangbusters. We're we're, we're, kind of we're getting good usage. It's it's leveled off a little bit. We've actually been in touch with the with the manufacturers or with the with the people that provide the app, and uh, we have a, a a good good package of. Uh, uh, of materials to, to start to jumpstart that again. Okay, it does I, seem to have increased a little bit as well in the last uh, last couple of weeks. We've, we've got quite a few. So. I know I've talked to Larissa. I think we're going to freshen up uh, some PR around it. Maybe to yeah. send another reminder out to folks that have kind of forgotten about it. Uh, so I think we can probably get that membership and usage up. It's pothole season, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Calls you might want to time that a couple of months from now. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you want to take us through revenues or capital? Uh, I was going to do revenues. Okay. Can I just one thing I want to flag on operations? Salt this year was an abnormally high year. Uh, we busted the budget, doubled it basically. Because of usage or price or both? Uh, usage predominantly. Usage. Uh, it, it, it was usage. Price has actually been consistent over the last three to three to four years. Uh, it was just a, a season where we were out many times. Uh, had really weird storms where there were extended ice storms. Uh, rain in February, snow in March. Just. Kind of a, a mix of, of all those things. Yeah, you, you actually mentioned last time that that may erode into our that will be in this year's <coughs> budget as a, yeah. as a as a flag. Yeah, we've, uh, it's really the salt line. Mike yep. and Stephen have done a great job. They've, uh, in spite of the extra events, uh, they've kept the overline, overtime line in check. It's right at budget, slightly above perhaps, but not notable. It's really that uh, material line of salt that uh, is considerably over. And so it's, a, it's always a difficult thing to speculate. Yeah. Are we going to have a similar experience next year? We have to increase the budget slightly. I think we put another 15,000 15, in. Uh, 
but time will tell. I, I think with changing weather patterns and such, uh, we're going to have to pay attention to that going forward. Are we? Do, do we need to play catch up at all? I mean, are we going to we're going to get back to I guess our standard levels fairly? It's not like we're going to be at a, at a at a deficit starting off in the next year, right? No, nope, no, nope, okay. we'll be we'll be all set with what we have. Yep, yep, we'll be fine. Thank you. And are you going to be able to get the uh, LED project online to get most of the year, July one? Yes, we're we're actually still on schedule to to start in uh, the beginning of May with with the implementation. Uh, the the crew that is working in Portland right now seems to think they're going to be done in May, and they're the ones that are coming over to take care of us. Did uh, uh, the sustainability coordinator assist you in this project? Uh -huh. Was she? Yeah, ab absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, Bill. Uh, Carrie Carrie Grantham has been a huge resource. Uh, she has been. She's the. The one that's been working mostly with with ten, and she's been the driver with keeping them on task and schedule, and uh, has been uh, been been very much involved in this. Has done a has been a huge help for sure. Yep. Good. I I had suspected she's very organized. Oh yeah. Uh, Excellent task. Uh, <laughs> do I understand that you have a uh, uh, is it a new rake or a rake for uh, high point seaweed and anything yep. on anything on that you could. Yep. We well, so the, the the current barber surf rake we have is uh, is is more of a grooming device, and and it's something that is works better in the dry sand, pick up the rock weed, uh, the, the the traditional weed that we're all used to seeing. And as you know, in the last five to seven years, has been an invasive red algae that's come in, and it doesn't quite make it up onto the dry sand. It's in the it's in the wet rack line area. Um, and that rake was really not designed for it and was actually uh, doing damage to it. Uh, so we, we tried with a small uh, York rake, and just a little tines. We, we tried a couple of times last year to see how it would work. Uh, and sure enough, it, it made it, it, it shortened up the amount of work we had to do, it worked very well. Uh, so we recently uh, purchased a 12-foot wide one. And so we'll be, uh, we'll be using that in conjunction with the barber surf rake to do some grooming of the of the upper dry sand it should uh, should allow us to uh, you know do the do the beach quicker. Hopefully uh, save some uh, save some staff time and that sort of thing as well, and also be a lot easier on the equipment. So if we get a bad rash of uh, red seaweed, we're going to be able to deal with it. Yes, budgeted yep. for it. Yep. And yes. In fact, we do have paid for or funded by community services but work performed by public works we do have two additional or an additional beach cleaning for the months of july and august in the yes. budget good yeah. thank you yeah. uh so uh revenues um really there's not a whole lot of changes um across most of the lines from from the previous budget um the uh the one that i did want to talk about uh talk about the most um was as i mentioned before the difficult maintenance Repairing that we do for the uh, the other communities, um, that would be Old Orchard Beach. Uh, Stephen, if I could, uh, just for those trying to follow along, it's tab three, page seven. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Old Orchard Beach, um, Kenny Bunk, Hollis, and Wells. Uh, this is primarily fire equipment that we're maintaining for them. Uh, we are also doing some uh, police vehicles uh, for Old Orchard Beach. Um, this is the second year that we've done it um, for the communities, so we're going into our third year. Um, last year we projected that we'd uh, get 161,000 from it. That actually increased to uh, 204 uh, as a result of uh, police vehicles set up for the Old Orchard Beach Police Department. Um, and the projection for, for this coming budget year is 194,000. Um, so they certainly seem very happy with the level of service that we're providing. As I mentioned earlier, yeah, we're making about 20%. Uh, um, Would you say based on this year's projection or this year's, yeah, this year's projected finish, that's a, I would say overly conservative, but a, a conservative number of what to expect for revenue will be made? Yeah, I, I think it is. Um, you know, it, it is driven by, by their budgets. Sure. Um, sure. And yeah, we ended up picking up the uh, the additional work from, from Old Orchard Beach mm -hmm. for their yeah. police department, so okay. uh, we don't know that we'll get that again this year. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we'll hold you to a number. I'm just, I just want to make sure we're not, we're not reaching for the stars and going to get caught short. But looking at the at the trend, it's, it's a very positive trend. Yeah, we did uh, six vehicle setups for Old Orchard police, yes. cruis police mm -hmm. cruisers. So, yeah. Cool. And those are a one-time thing, though, right? With the new vehicle purchase, the setup is a correct. Okay. Correct. So you know, and and they're new vehicles. So anything from here on out, uh, 
we may do some minor maintenance on them, but they're going to be under warranty for the next three years, so yeah. we won't see them back. Do, do you know what their replacement schedule is? Do they have something similar to us, or are they just kind of happenstance? I, and I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think this year was an unusual year. Um, I think they're more in the in the line of, uh, of of a couple, two or three, and that's about it. Okay. The fact that they brought four on in the same year suggests to me, in a town that size, that they were out of cycle. That yeah. uh, they had a bunch of old ones that they yeah. had to yeah. replace. We did that on a contract basis, uh, mm -hmm. separate contract, uh, separate from our maintenance contract. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, fair. So I guess turning to sort of capital improvements as we kind of close in. Like, well, well, sorry, sorry. One, one last question on the DOT. You what, we're, we're, what happened with that? We're, we're a little short on that one. Well, oh, oh, sorry. That, that's the, uh, the fuel reimbursement that we get from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I don't yeah. actually know what's driving that, so that's available on their, on their website. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a percentage of uh, it, it's a percentage of revenues from uh, from fuel taxes, and then it's apportioned out by lane miles uh, for each community. And you know, everybody's driving fuel efficient cars, so. <laughs> so, but that's that's probably a statewide hit. It's not anything to get yep. to Scarborough. Yep. Nope. We, it's a statewide hit, and actually, as as, uh, as Stephen mentioned, if you go onto the DOT's website, every community. That, that gets those Europe grants uh, will will show that, and it shows a couple of years of history too. So. Okay. And, and again, it's indexed to the gas tax. So, well, maybe, maybe we'll get higher excise taxes on this on the uh, efficiency vehicles to make up the difference, right? <laughs> I'm kidding, but <laughs> sorry. Yeah, just turn to capital improvements, which is what under tab six, yes. um, page four. Just can you talk a little bit about, you had a great write-up, but there is one item for $325,000, this new sweeper truck, apparently there's some. But the question becomes, is that, is it cheaper? I mean, does that get used a lot? Is it cheaper to try to contract that out for what we need to do it? That's a, that's a pretty pricey piece of equipment. It is a pricey piece of equipment. Um, so we, we actually tried to contract it out last, last year. Yeah. Uh, we were down to one sweeper. We've, Previously had to do it with two, uh, two to do it with. Um, unfortunately, due to their time schedule, um, they weren't able to do it during the day. Um, so we attempted to do it at night, and uh, obviously wasn't to be popular with some of the residents. <laughs> um, so that uh, it, it really restricts us um, with, with trying to do it with the contractor. You know, they, you know, they're using it on uh, on other jobs that they're doing around the state and other projects. Um, so we've, we, we we did look at that. Um, Try to do it with one sweeper. You know, it's it's really not realistic. Um, if we want to do it in a time of manner, most people want it to, want everything swept up. You know, before May, uh, preferably. Uh, even with two sweepers, that that's definitely a push. But uh, trying to do it with one is is, is really a challenge. Did we buy no one not too long ago? Was that something else? That was no, some we, other sweeper. We, thing. we have we have uh, the Elgin Eagle sweeper that we have, which is our newer one, is coming up on ten years old as right, well. So I think you gave us a heads up next last year that. It's it's probably coming. Coming. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys have looked at it. This is the best yeah. option. Unfortunately, yeah. The, the sweet sweepers are one of those things that every everybody when when they want to be used, everybody needs them at that time. So yeah. that that's a challenge. Uh, mm. And and then the other piece is is that uh, <coughs> this, this vacuum sweeper that we're proposing uh, really is is what we need to meet our our minimum uh, minimum measure under the stormwater requirement for. Uh, for, for, how, for good housekeeping, for sweeping, for particular matter, size, and that sort of thing. So, so coming back full circle, when you're having a conversation where neighboring towns are on rubbish removal and other stuff, is there a way to lease the machine out to? Again, just 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 like you demand? can't just, just like you can't lease a plow uh, a plow truck because when it's snowing snow two inches an hour, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that's, uh, that's why you know you, you can you can do a mutual aid with fire trucks because hopefully we're not having fires in both towns time. at the same time, and that's that's kind of one of those <laughs> things. Any, any concerns with uh, uh, excessive wear and tear on one sweeper that we're down to now if this doesn't happen? Well, always. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're essentially on, a, on an annual basis doubling the use that, that it receives. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's always a challenge. And, uh, uh, you know, sweep, sweepers, are, sweepers are one of those things that uh, they, they start taking themselves apart the, when you mm -hmm. put them into, into, uh, into service because they're sweeping sand and mm -hmm. they're just tough. So yeah. there's a lot of maintenance involved in them. Yeah. They're a necessary evil. I mean, that's just the, the bottom line. Any other questions on? Then flipping to capital projects, this is, I think, what Chris was asking about. Um, it's under tab seven, page, I don't know, but nine. Nine. 
page nine, there's 135,000 for Dunstan intersection adaptive lights, and we just recently did that intersection not that long ago, right? So what is, what is 135,000, and what, what, what is I mean, Tom? Uh, impact fees. So we collect traffic impact fees. They're also dedicated to certain, yeah, a reserve reserve. This would come out of. But they're from traffic impact fees, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the, the work that we did in 2013 was the realignment of, of Payne Road um, that was done down there. The, the adaptive traffic lights, um, so basically the way that with the lights work down there right now is they're on timer, so it's yeah. set. They have a schedule for each day. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's set. You can change it by day, but you, you really restrict to that. So if there's any change in, in traffic flow through that intersection, it's not able to, to pick up on that, that change. Um, so what Adaptive does is rather than rely on those uh, pre-programmed settings, it'll pick up traffic volume on each of those, it those roads. It senses the traffic yes. there. And stuff. So, for example, if we have you know changing weather, um, that's one of the big drivers. If people are going to the beach, people are going from the beach if it starts raining, uh, it'll pick up on increased uh, traffic from Pine Point and be able to give those those people more more time coming out of Pine Point. Road. And, and does it improve traffic flow through those yes. those intersections? Yes. I mean, remarkably so. I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have any numbers, but yeah, um, you know, we're, we're really restricted with with the uh, the current setup in, in terms of how much uh, how much optimization we can do. Um, so this really allows us to, to improve that. So it sounds like you're a big fan of these things. <coughs> I've heard it, I've heard the pitch through transportation department, and yeah, it's I mean, it, it's not just a it's not just a cool gadget. I mean, obviously, if you've ever sat through a light at Dunstan with nobody around and you're sitting there for five minutes, you, you get pretty frustrated. Yeah. And, and we've got a lot of pushback, too, from coming up on that Payne Road connector. Um, people just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there with no one around. No one around. So I, I think it's, um, it's, it's a good mating of technology and public service all at once. Mm -hmm. Less less idle time uh, right. the, the whole night. It, it's, it's, and, and that intersection, because the lights are so close to each other, it's, it's a perfect candidate, first candidate in this town to do it. Um, and, and if if it works there, it's, it's, it's going to be, it'll be even that much better along the whole one corridor in the future if, and, and that sort of thing. So It's a lot better than rebuilding the intersection of the city. Yes, it is. It, 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 will, it will absolutely, it'll, with, 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 the, with those traffic controls, it's my feeling that if, it will maximize what's there. If, if it's not working, once, we, once you have the adaptive traffic controls in there, then you've got to go to plan B, which is a realignment of the intersection or something like that. But it's, it, it maximizes what's there today. Anybody else? Anybody? No, great, good. great job. Thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure to review your budget. It's clean. It's easy to understand. And how do you argue with a negative yeah. <laughs> increase? So well, yeah, yeah. And with an increase in potholes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> nice job, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So do you want to start with revenues, just in front of the book, or do you want to go? Uh, no, that's fine. Sure. So I have revenues at tab three, page four. Just as everyone gets organized, um, my observation, and frankly the experience since I've been here with community services, uh, there's a strange kettle of fish that falls under uh, the heading community services. Uh, essentially. Um, Bruce Gullifer, who really started and created this department, uh, never said no, is what I'd say. Uh, anything that didn't fit somewhere else found its way under this heading. So um, bear with us. There's a lot of different pieces. Some are kind of disjointed from others. But um, uh, I guess the point of all of that is that community service uh, does what needs to get done to make this town work in many respects. They're kind of the, the engine that goes unappreciated often. Hmm. So if I could, and... and the overall, one of my overall goals being the first one, this is I prevented, was trying to right size a lot of stuff. And you notice some big changes in the, um, in right siding on the revenue side. For example, uh, summer camp and youth program, you'll see summer camp is down um, over $30,000. But in the past, that's 
all of our contracted summer camps have been lumped in there, but they've been paid for under the youth program expense line. So I right sized things so the expense matched up where the proper revenue are. So it's not a decrease in revenue, it's just a realignment through that process. So when we're looking at accounting, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes our programmers feel a little better when they're looking and they're doing a great job that they're seeing that they're in the positive versus the negative. Um, you'll also notice a change in um, beach parking revenue this year. It's projected up $50,000. That's a conservative estimate in the sense of, as we all know, beach parking is weather permitted. So um, we, the, um, we did raise our fees this year uh, through, the, through that process. Um, That's good. But uh, without getting ahead of ourselves, again, not knowing the weather traditionally. So we went up $50,000. Um, and again, surplus from that goes directly to the beach reserve account um, through there. Um, also, another revenue adjustment has been with our senior programming. Um, presently, the way we're doing our lunch with an outside contractor, we, we adjusted senior programming trips and food. You'll see some changes in those lines on the revenue side. Uh, one went down and uh, one went up significantly, and then senior food reimbursement is a $6,000 increase um, as we're collecting those fees now for lunch revenue. So those are positive gains on the senior side. Um, and then also you'll see some, some small increase in different areas. But two to note are our trips, both on the senior side and on the community service side. We're now offering, we did a uh, Celtics trip this winter, and we're offering a Red Sox trip. Um, so we, we added the uh, expense line to offset trip, uh, tickets and transportation, but showing a positive in the revenue side for those. Um, so the first one went well, and we've got another one scheduled for September. Are these netting out positive, or are they, is this going to be a wash? Uh, most of them are netting out uh, in, in the positive areas that are neg that are not netting out are our senior programming. If you look at that whole unit um, on the expense side, uh, we're expending roughly 118,000 and generating about 40,000. We have met with the senior trustees uh, and reviewing how we charge, what's a community good service, what's tolerable, what's the expectation level. So we have been working through those exercises where we're not getting full like on our trips. It's not a full 100% cost recovery mm -hmm. right. on those trips. So what's tolerable and what's our service? Yep. So we also have great limitations in, in terms of what program we, we can offer. We don't have space necessarily to offer that. So right. um, Peter and I were talking earlier today, uh, and we can provide this uh, you know, by the end of the week probably, is based on the, the cost centers, if you will, we can provide an aggregate form. What does it cost to run yeah. senior programs, yeah. like he just said, and right. we'll do it across all divisions so you can really see what what are the revenue generators and what are the ones that what, what are, need some tax support to help fund? Yeah, that would really help. Two quick questions on youth yeah. program. I, I may have missed the email. Yeah. That's up 58. What? Right. That was, uh, that was the one I started to explain at the beginning where that revenue was all lumped in the general summer camp line before. That's why you see the summer camp oh, that's, line that's coming okay. down okay. and that one going up because that's where Bill and Ryan, when they run all their contract to camps, soccer, mm -hmm. horseback riding, uh, the robotics, all that stuff had been lumped together, but it's being paid for on a different expense account. So I moved it into the proper, so it matches up for them. Okay. And then the parking revenue, it didn't, that's just, that was just a function of the fee schedule changing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one quick question about franchise fee. What, what, that's a pretty decent <coughs> sum there. What's that from? Yep. That is the uh, cable franchise fees we receive from users. Okay. It's been pretty steady. That's the same estimate as last year because what we've been tracking is at least two years in a row around the same. And one of our concerns is everybody starts streaming, they mm -hmm. start dropping their cable, so we kind of held that flat this year. And that's, uh, if I understand correctly, that's that's set by the state, I think, or something, right? I mean, we don't. It's not a contract. Fee. Yeah, we actually issue a franchise agreement to now Spectrum, uh, okay. the successor okay. from I don't know, it was Time Warner, yes. probably someone before that. Right, right, right. So it's a percentage uh, number that was negotiated. <clears throat> And I think Todd's wise to be wary of this number as there's just more streaming options and other options than, than uh, coax cable hung on the. Yeah. How often is that negotiated? Uh, it's been 20 plus years. No, is it an annual annual negotiation? No, or is certainly it, it's not. Just, it's just fixed and, and, and until it changes, nobody, nobody has anything until it changes. There are some communities that try to wade, wade into that area and yeah. renegotiate. Yeah. Uh, what I'm hearing from my colleagues is that's not going so well. Right. We're getting all sorts of resistance from Spectrum. Yeah, um, yeah and I'm not suggesting we do that. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out what the stability of this of this revenue stream is, whether it's something that's... I know the number's going to fluctuate, but... Stability, by, stability by contract, uh, I think it's very high. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, consumer-driven at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
and flipping to sort of the expense size, just, just at a global level, on page 35 under tab 4. Which, uh, <coughs> um, so it kind of goes back the revenue line. Your total revenue is up 109000 but the total expenses are up 116. So expenses are growing faster than revenues, and our hope was. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, one of the things on the ex uh, expense side this year was right-sizing um, this budget where there's, there was quite a few lines at 500,000 that hadn't been used in a long time. Uh, the biggest driver in this group is our increase in our utilities. There's an increase of 36,000 over $36,000 to water and sewer. Okay. Uh, one, the rate's going up. Um, we've just been overspending those lines and then, and then picking it up in other pieces, whether that's been reserve accounts or it's been offsetting with some of these other shorter lines. Um, and so, what, what facilities yeah. are using the water and sewer for? You need for the for like grants, groundskeeping types type stuff. Yeah, for irrigation, irrigation but also right. for like um, the high school complex, the the restrooms at all the locations that are seasonal. Um, I did reach out to the uh, Scarborough Sewer District uh, because of this increased number and looking at how it's been fluctuating. So I've asked them to do a full e re evaluation of our system. So he's working on that process for us right now, looking at how we do that. Because what happens is, is that it, it's, it's kind of convoluted. You get an initial bar was set here when these facilities were built, and then they get a reuse, mm -hmm. and there's never been that Adjustment. Yes, the adjustment. Right. Capacity reserve fee, it's just like any business. <coughs> Before they connect, you connect to the sewer okay. system, okay. They, you have to demonstrate or provide them an estimate of what your usage will be. Then at some later point, they come back and it actually Re check usage. And right. they will often hit you with a surcharge, essentially, if there's a big difference there. It ends up being a huge issue for many businesses. We've had businesses in town being hit with $80,000, $100,000 uh, surcharges. How can they do that? Is it are, are we metered like everybody else, or do we have a do we have a contract? Yeah. We're metered. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we're also having them look at based on some of the use. Like our biggest user is the high school complex, mm -hmm. uh, electricity wise, and also sewer. And so we're looking at can we separate those meters to get a little better tracking? Is that a school functional driven? Is it an R driven? How do we look at that? Yeah, and, and meters for sewer are it's based on, based on water use, water yeah. consumption, yeah. right? So yeah, I mean, this this kind of circles back to a conversation we've had in prior years. Is really trying to get a handle. So Tom had suggested trying to break out the revenue yep. lines with the expenses. Yep. But that has always been a question. What is the right? What is the value of the services that are being supporting the school functions right. versus the community functions? And how do we account for that? And what do we do with that? And that's so you're saying that thirty-six thousand dollar hit. To your is is that sewer assessment? Is that what it's talking? sewer and it's and it's and it's water usage sure. through all the facilities. As we're as we're running this organic program, we've increased our water volume to try to meet that need. Um, is it also this building? Well, it's, it includes everything. It's this building. It's it's the concession the stands. Natural gas in uh, this building. Is that well, the, the the biggest drivers right now for us is that our natural gas costs. We've expended estimated ten thousand dollars more this mm -hmm. year in the natural gas costs. Our, our, our water and sewer capacity is up, usage is up, um, yeah, I, I electricity has gone down as a whole I think here. To, yeah, I think to Peter's point, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, we've talked about this in the past, those tentacles have been entwined with each other between the school and the community yep. services for a long time, and trying to drill down into the separation Absolutely. of powers, if you will, or roles and responsibilities and benefits and costs is, is extremely, extremely difficult. So I guess maybe from the 50,000 foot level, I would ask how, how, how are we progressing in terms of detangling those, not necessarily because we want to separate the two groups, yep. but we want to establish value. And if, if, we're be, if the community service is being compensated correctly for the services they're providing, and likewise, is the school department, uh, you know, are they missing on revenues that maybe they need to capitalize well, on? So, so yeah, they're not. A couple of things that we've been working through is mm -hmm. um, services that we provide for the school. I found an old report from like 2013 that Bruce had put together regarding uh, use, cable, maintenance uh, services. Um, so for the school, I mean, we do all their indoor and outdoor scheduling. We do all their grounds maintenance for their athletic complex. Outdoor. Outdoor maintenance. They do their interior. Mm -hmm. um, we cover all their overhead costs for this building and the maintenance, uh, cable services use. Mm -hmm. um, 
And if I took our projected grounds maintenance budget, which is over $600,000, and even took 20% of that, which I know the figure is higher, you're already over $181,000. So again, I think to your point, we need to figure out kind of where that is. We could probably sit here and argue, is it 40%? Is it 20%? Because it's seasonal. Um, so where that number falls, right. um, we do, as far as the school, we do pay revenue to the school. Mm -hmm. That's We do pay for use of Wentworth School. We pay $33,000 a year mm -hmm. to the school district for that space use. Mm -hmm. But you also receive revenue from Correct. From Absolutely. But you like were asking well. the comparison of what yeah. we're gaining versus yeah. what we're giving yeah. Um, yeah. and just trying to identify those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just I, a, a simple yeah. example, and uh, I'll speak to it, but I'm looking at uh, Exhibit 4A. But um, in rough numbers, tab the total budget, I'm sorry, Tab 9. Rough numbers, the community services budget is 2.8 million, 2.85. Nearly 80% of that is supported through fees and revenues, non property tax revenues. Which page are you using? Tab 9, uh, tab page, nine. 14. No, page 14. 14. So if you look at the bottom of that chart, there you go. So the total budget, 2.85 million, 2.26 is covered through user fees and, and the like um, and then the remaining 587 there has to be supported through taxation and I simply will make the point on the grounds we have a grounds budget of six hundred six thousand dollars we have offsetting revenue of thirty six five mm -hmm. so right there is five hundred and seventy thousand dollars in stranded cost that we don't have anyone to pay that bill right but again I, I, I don't think we're going to resolve it here no, either no I, I think I think the bottom line is is, is and, and I'm not I'm no, I don't want to determine who gets what and who doesn't get what I, I think it's very very important for the community to understand if we're going to do shared services which we are it is a good model for everybody and and we've got to be able to identify those cost savings and those cost drivers so that we're all clear with you know if if you know, because I know from my experience on the school board, they're going to say, but you're getting revenue sources from other areas that they could capitalize on as well. I'm not saying one side's right, one side's wrong. You know, rental fees, for example, for fields, you know, things like that. Okay. Right. So, so I, I just, I'd like to see a little bit of progress in terms of, you know, working, and I know you're working with them already, and I know that's an ongoing project. I guess what I'm looking for is a little bit more, uh, I'd like to see a little more progress with, with dividing that out and a, and a resolution between both groups of saying, okay, Here's what we're bringing for value. Here's what you're paying, and vice versa from the other side, so that we're not we're not saying you're not sitting here saying, well, we've got six hundred or three hundred thousand stranded costs over here, right. but I'm making it up over here somewhere else. Right. I guess just yes. for clarification, you said uh, on what they're paying, they're paying nothing. On that particular, on that yes, on that particular line, I'm correct. But and as I said, I'm not here to sit here and decide who's right. doing what, who's not doing right. what. Well, that's the, the part. The, the, the point. The point I want to make is that there's also revenue that they're not seeing in there, and there are obviously very revenue. They they, they they have a very difficult time generating outside revenues, unlike the town does. So, I, I, I looking at this chart, um, I've seen this year in and year out. <coughs> My concern is that the property tax number here has stayed pretty constant. Um, so your rev your budget's increasing. Your estimated revenues are increasing, but you're always paying between three and five hundred thousand, or three and six hundred thousand in, in in property taxes. So I think the ultimate goal, and, and Councillor Baybine's not here, but I know that's a, that's been a source part for him in the past. Yeah. This number, I would expect this number to be diminishing over time, not as a percentage of the tax, but the value, the, the dollar value, to be diminishing over time, so that eventually, if community service is going to be self-funded through fees and that kind of structure, then I, it would be self-sustaining. So I've started that process, just, just for not to get off the track here, mm -hmm. but looking at, again, breaking it up into 10 categories, administration, beaches, building and cable, child care, boat launch, programs, maintenance, rec, senior program, and, and, and presently right now the ground maintenance we're carrying almost $569,000. Mm -hmm. This building alone, in the relationship with the, um, the building across the street, we're carrying on our end $171,000. So between those two is $700,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of unrecoverable funds. Yeah, I, I think what our frustration has been yeah. over the last budget cycles yeah, yeah. is the way this piece is done, we'll have asked for some clarity about where, you know, where do we have revenues for child care? What are our expenses for child care? Where do we, so we can, you know, the senior program, break it out so that we can actually see 
where we have revenues and we don't have revenues and where we have this shortfall, let's try to figure out where the shortfall is coming from and, and what do we do with it. All right, I can tell you that the two areas, and we'll give you this by the end of the week, is, um, is the cost associated with the shared services with school. Someone's got to pay that bill. And the cost of operating this building in the Oak Hill Professional Building and the same program. Yeah. And, and I would, yeah, I mean, I would just point out, what would the cost be if you were out of Wentworth? You'd have to have your own facility for that, right? I mean, you're paying you're paying thirty three thousand in rent right now. Absolutely. It would cost you to be in another facility, a right. lot more than that probably. Right. Or you'd have to build one. So right. I, there, there, there's two sides okay. to the story, of course. And and I know we're only getting one side of it here, and that's fine. I get that. I guess my uh, I'm, my frustration is that I'd I'd like to see a little bit better accounting of the of the differences. So we're getting there. That's great. That's, I'm, I'm glad to see that. Uh, I, I'd like to see a, a little bit more pull through. That's all. It, it, it may be coming back. I know we're kind of my bigger my biggest question on this budget on page 35. I see your overall percentage increase in expenses is 4.3. Yep. And we were really shooting for sort of the overall 3%. And you've got some pretty big line item variances on here. Yep. And you talk us through, so for instance, you've got contracted services going up 7%, you have services and charges going up 10%, you have property going up 68%. Right. Can you talk about you Absolutely. have other costs going up? You, all your line items yep. are going up much higher than I would have expected for level services. So what what is changing? Sure. What is yep. what is what are the cost drivers that are you know, one Absolutely. you mentioned and I'd like to get clarity too is now, we have asked every year about organics. Yep. Every year in the write-up is we have to add more labor and costs because organics are costing us a lot more than we anticipated. Yep. Every year that's a driver. If now it's driving water and sewer usage, um, and we've asked, is it, so I, can you explain just why these numbers sure. are, are so much higher than, than? Yeah, absolutely. And looking at the percentage um, going across, you talked, for example, coming down contract, it is up $19,000. Um, that is a direct rel uh, relation to utilities. We have increased this year. We have about five thousand dollars more in court repair. Um, then court repair, tenant, um, the basketball courts do. That one's usually much more expensive than doing a tennis court. So, and then that, so that's what's in that contract line. So when you talk about six six point seven percent, that nineteen thousand dollars, that includes the natural gas in this building. Maybe they, maybe it's not natural gas is where. When you con between contracted services and service and charges, uh, and I don't want to misspeak because I, I didn't group these together. I'm saying what's in those two those two lines together that that thirty that forty one thousand dollars is increased is covered in all the utilities is in that that grouping. The outdoor court repair is an increase this year. The in ten thousand dollar increase in natural gas and also the the uh, maintenance of the trigen. Those two groupings. That's where that if you add them together. That's where that 17% increase comes from for a total of $41,000 is those four areas. So natural gas is reverting more natural gas in the, in the generator? In the trigen, yes. Colder winter. Colder winter. And I think we're, we underestimated. We're still trying to understand the system and its needs. So that's when that line, if you look at supplies, that, that uh, that 7.5%, that $20,000 increase, that goes back to the increases in the senior and the uh, recreational community programming, but it's offset by revenue. So you see that increase, uh, and that revenue is offsetting both of those substantially. When you look at property, you saw that uh, um, the property is showing a 68.4% increase, which is misleading because it's $11,000. That's two pieces of equipment that we're trying to purchase. Uh, one is a new trailer to handle uh, the tractor and the uh, slice seeder all in one load versus making multiple loads. And also in this budget is to purchase a, um, it's called a turbine blower, but you tow behind a gator which allows, send a crew out, uh, weed whack, pick up debris, and then blow it while you're driving away versus having to put guys out there with hand blowers. It can also be used for parking lot, blows off all the debris on the turf. It has numerous pieces. Uh, so it's a good piece of equipment to add to. So that's why that, that line, well, when you say 60, <coughs> it's $11,000. But why are you, that's a piece of equipment, but you've got other equipment and capital improvements. How are you making a distinction between what's operational uh, and what's capital? Well, it was a it was threshold as far as the cost of it. Value of the item itself. We, we, yeah. gave, we gave direction really to put that operational as much as possible. For well, but... Right, I mean, I thought we did. Yeah, but I mean, what's the threshold? I thought it was... 
well, we're talking mm -hmm. multiple pieces. One's a, a trailer around $7,500, and another unit's on seven, so they're under that, and those are one-time pieces of equipment. I think that was what we were to try to work stuff into our operational budget versus putting into capital improvement as much as possible. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm trying, I mean, you've got a lot of equipment, so that's gonna be another question that I have. I, I didn't realize that was those two pieces of equipment also here. Sure. I mean, yep. you've got two pickup trucks and- Yep, uh, yeah, we can talk about that when we get to see it. So that's, a, that's yep. you know, you're talking about 150,000 in equipment. Yeah, I haven't pulled up my capital improvement. Are we, do you want to go to capital or you? No, I got all kinds of questions. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll, I'll start, uh, I guess I'll start on, uh, on page three. Um, are there any so listed services and activities offered by this department? Um, they're all very, very clear. Um, are any of these services that could be better or more efficiently provided by other departments? I'm sorry, you said page three? Page three. You meant page oh, I'm sorry, 30 36. Six. It's kind of Thank off. You. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Thank sorry. You. sorry, sorry. My apologies. Yep. 36. So uh, on the administration side, you've got a list of services and activities offered by this department. There's a, there's a whole line list. And I, and I agree, yep. you, you've, you've, that's, that's a very full service and wide range of services. Absolutely. So th again, the question is, is you know, are there any services on this list that you think could be better handled and more efficiently handled by other departments? Yeah, I, I think at this point right now, our staff is, first of all, in the, in the past four, four weeks, we've become first time full staff since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, so people are actually starting to do their job with between turnover and uh, moving up in different positions. I mean, looking through this list, uh, passports, one of our increased services we changed to by appointment. We're seeing an increase in passport services that they're handling upstairs. Mm -hmm. Now staff can do their work and prepare for passports versus having somebody pop in. Um, ticket sales and sporting events and all that sort of stuff, those are community good services where we purchase we uh, consignment tickets from other uh, main parks and rec association, sell them at a discount, and we get a small bump for each one we sell, but which is like a normal programming operation. Um, as far as you know, things that are listed here, Dragon Five Management of Gardens, those are all just services that run through our rec track system, so it's not a an increase to burden. Um, and as I said earlier, the strange collection these. Where things don't fit neatly somewhere else, they fall under community services. These are responses to community demands through the years. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not questioning the services sure. that are being offered. I'm questioning is are there other departments that might be able to? It might fall better into their bailiwick now, or be a little bit more easily handled. Let's say like scheduling. You know, there's a constant struggle with. I, I, I'm not necessarily on the municipal side, but. You know, when we have limited space, uh, how do we interface with the schools better to get access to Wentworth and the high school and all those other things? You yep. know, uh, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm just, it, 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 if there's no interaction or there's, if you're comfortable with all this cadre of services, that's great. Yeah, at this point I would say yes. I mean, okay. since we've got back to full staff, our relationship with the schools improved regarding meetings yep. and looking at space and they're charging the fees internally, which revenue goes to them from that. Yep. Um, but yeah, as far as that section, Okay. I think we've got passports is the one that's the newest, uh, and they accept they, they took it on because the library didn't want to do it anymore. And mm -hmm. based on community interest, it seems like it's a pretty important service. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's the one that really puts some demands. We've managed it better with uh, doing it by appointment, mm -hmm. right. but it's still uh, quite taxing. So moving on to 37 on the administrative side, you've got um, in your little your little yep. tree here of responsibility. You have four full-time and one part-time in administration, but you have a wages and benefits line of 478,864. Are, are there more than four people or five people, four full and one part-time in that wages just, line? Um, Do you follow where I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, four part, under our full-time there's one, two. Yeah, I think that that number doesn't look right to no, me either. I was if you say look at the line item detail under administration, it's right. tab ten, page sixteen. There's uh, director salary, office manager, and clerical. That adds up. It says what you're saying full time, full time, and all years. That's your whole page 35. Tab 10. Same tab, you're just on 4. Tab 4, page 35. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm just, I, that number seems excessively high for that number of staff. Ruth, uh, please, somebody. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> um, the administration portion, 
as it shows, includes not only administration, it also includes cable TV, mosquito control, and the municipal building, and okay. the professional building. So I think okay. the numbers in terms of employees. The four and one is, yeah, I didn't know what. So, so can we adjust that, please, and make sure that that's an accurate representation of that, that, that cost line? Right, or, or is that is that just not represented the right? Way? The challenge of this reporting is that we need to roll up some of these just for yeah. efficiency purposes. Yep. Maybe we need yep. to do a better job of describing what's contained here. Mm -hmm. um, that's I, a fair I, yeah. point. It's still a work in progress. Uh, you, you can certainly look at the line in detail and know exactly uh, which positions are in the administration and then all the way through under tab ten. I just want to make sure that it's explained well because anybody else looking at this document is going to say Absolutely. four full time, one, one half for $480,000. Right. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Okay. Okay. Great. Excellent um, point. Thank you. Yep. Uh, you've already talked about you're going to do the breakout of registration and programming, uh, so that's good. Ticket, you explain that as well. I'm not sure what that is. Registration, registration and broke. You said it. Uh, just you just you, you wrote um, in budget drivers. Uh oh. Was where they had that. Uh, oh, oh, I know what it was. I'm sorry. So if we go to tab nine, page five again. You're in the exhibit section? Yeah, in the exhibit section. Okay, um, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, page 17. Yep. You've got um, participants in programming? Yes. Um, and I think you would already mentioned that you're going to do a breakout of what percentages are... are, are um, Senior and what percentage of you from a cost perspective, yes. dollar perspective? Yeah. So, uh, I just saw that as as um, total gross total number of participants, and I was more looking for a way to break down those individual components and on okay. what was costing, what wasn't. So, if you're going to address that. That's fine. You address the ticket issue. Um, uh, Oak Hill Professional Building. What's what's our relationship with that? What's what's the uh, we have a, a contract with them as far as rent and covering of services. Mm -hmm. um, where is that? It's a town-owned facility. Yeah. That okay. is leased out. It is leased out to them. Is that 59? That uh, is uh, Black, Point. Black Point Road. Black Point Road, yes. Okay. Yep. Actually, as that comes up, I know, jumping ahead a little bit and jumping back to last night, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really costly repairs coming. You've got money in the budget. Oh, there's definitely for, a consideration as far as yeah. use so, and value of that building to the community. We're, well, I mean, uh, the question becomes, you know, with what is coming, why do we? Why don't we try to sell it, or is that something that we can look at? Is divesting <coughs> that property? I mean, it, or at, at least, can you do a return on analysis saying, what is it costing us to operate, especially right. with repairs that are coming? You've got a new heating system to contemplate. It. Oh yeah. So I mean, it, it would seem like we may want to bail. We either decide to invest in it or bail and get out of the real estate. I got to believe it has a lot of value as a real estate. It does. I can tell you, prior counsel, I, I, I hear it. I've heard it just a couple of weeks ago that we never should have sold the Dunstan School. So I think the, a prior counsel decided to hold that building. We were able to find a good, solid tenant that's been paying market rent. Uh, your point's well taken, but I, I think is it, it was. Is, is it an ROI for us? Um, and, and versus getting prime dollar for it right now and yeah. plowing it back into other things we're doing. Operationally, it is, but when we're getting into this long term maintenance cost, I'm not, I haven't done that analysis to see well, if but, yeah. we get into yeah. roofing and 230,000 heating system because it's a <coughs> building, so there's a lot more work to it. Yeah, yeah, that's going to decrease the method, but obviously if we put on the market with those things that are required too. So Well, yeah, but it's either, but, but I think we should do that analysis before we invest, so that's sort of, sort of a sidebar. Okay. Work. All right. Uh, before, uh, yeah, believe me, I, we're not comfortable being uh, landlords, uh, yes. except for ourselves. Uh, yeah, well, we don't have any long-term <coughs> uh, expectation of use, do we? There's an existing lease. I'll have to look at it. Uh, I believe it's it's a five year. <coughs> it's midpoint of that, or I, I can find out what that commitment is. Hmm. I, I guess maybe the maybe the point is is we we, we look at that from an asset management perspective. Yeah. Or do we? Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously that's well, it's manager's okay. prerogative. But I mean, no, I'd be curious to know where we're at with that. Um, so page thirty nine. 
back on floor this. Uh, budget drivers, added maintenance costs for the trijet. Can you get into a little bit more of that other than, is there anything other than uh, natural gas costs? Sure. Yeah, in that, in that grounds budget section, uh, big increases this year um, have been just general, um, like I said, in that, there's a $3,500 increase to that where the outdoor, curts, uh, outdoor court resurfacing is in that grouping this year. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for the dollar, but I'm looking for the specific line on a budget driver, added maintenance cost of the Trigen project. Oh, could I'm sorry. Get, yeah, could you get a little deeper into that? Yes. Um, let's see here. <coughs> on the Trigen. Uh, sorry, why can't I find that? It's, there's, there's two drivers while he finds that. One, one is the cost of natural gas, the, the fuel for the system. Yep. And secondly, there are, uh, we've had repairs and maintenance. There's, uh, there's a standard contract for service, but we've actually had some normal uh, shutdowns and extended shutdown almost a month um, and a cost of repair. Are we still, um, I think there was some talk also about having one of the consultants or something still on the hook for uh, a hold back or something? Are we still, have, have all contracts been fulfilled and completed? No, we're still okay. retaining some money. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that retainer was really for some performance uh, reporting. Mm -hmm. um, they're not responsible for repairs at this point. It's, it's beyond that period. Was it warranty work? It was not. No. So I apologize, when you said page 39, I looked at, that's grounds facility, and that's listed under uh, municipal building, so I apologize. Yeah, the, the gas is a, a $12,000 increase, and then general maintenance, we've been averaging uh, about $50,000 in general maintenance, which is 5,000, so there's 17 right there in that line. Is the 50,000 uh, general maintenance not for the trigen, but overall, or is that just the trigen, 50,000? Uh, general maintenance on the trigen is 50, that's annual services, okay. monthly services. Is that beyond the, what we put in our ROI calculations for the payback on that unit? Meaning, meaning, is that 50000 within line that we normally expected every year we were going to have 50000 in maintenance, or is that something that's an anomaly? No, I think that's in line, okay. Uh, okay. but the, the repair costs have not, been not factored into the ROI. Well, I, I, I get that. I understand the difference. And, uh, and a quick question, though, that as, as the new public safety building comes online, again, is community services budget going to pick up all of the operational cost of TriGen, or are we going to do some accounting back to public safety building. I mean, those are just things I think we need absolutely, to absolutely. Yeah. keep uh, we've lumping had everything those. into community service and then it's really hard to figure out. So no, I think you're right. you know, those are you There'll know, be a proper allocation as best we can. Yes. Yeah, because they're they're gonna they're gonna they'll pull fifty thousand square foot building it's double the size of this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more concerned with getting to the point where we're ready to expand if that's really the technology that we want to expand on what's there and existing or do we want to try a different direction because but that we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, Bottom of the page activity indicators, additional, you know, the top line, additional laborers to provide help to facilitate the organic program. Could you dig a little deeper into that for me, please? Yep. Sure. Um, we've taken on this year, um, we have taken on uh, the slice seating ourselves, so trying to look at that contract as a whole, our present provider is, uh, is allowing us to do those uh, in house services. Mm -hmm. So this year we slice seated the uh, fields ourselves. Uh, we're being allowed to purchase and um, save the middleman on seed and materials, so that's a savings for us. Um, and so, but that's taking somebody out, so we're bringing on part-time people to pick up miscellaneous jobs when we put one of our full-timers in the piece of equipment mm -hmm. to do that. And that's part of the, going back to Peter's question regarding the organics, that's part of the analysis we're looking at. As we increase our services, uh, I think that's part of the organic challenge is that we were limited to what we could afford as far as how much we aerated, how much we seeded. So now we're seeming to be able to do that. Uh, we've added more seeding. We, uh, we seeded twice in the fall last year to get caught up uh, in some of these organic practices. And then um, once we're able to buy our own aerator, we'll be able to even increase that even more. There's also a problem with uh, uh, flower beds and such that uh, we have not found a good organic product that can do weed control. So we need to go the old fashioned pulling of weeds. That's been a problem since going right. organic, frankly. Right. So I think. Again, we've asked for that analysis for a couple of years in a row. What is all in organic costing us versus other ways right. we could pursue? And I think. Yep. <coughs> yep. So, to, so to answer your question, we have uh, a new member on our board, and, and um, Bill was at our last organic uh, pest management committee. Excuse me. Um, 
and we're starting to look at our soil samples. We're starting to look at what we're doing in this new fashion because before it was a different, different platform <coughs> that we were using. And so trying to look at that cost center. Because I, I got thought once we did it before, it would, we thought it was a $75,000 delta or something between but the, what organics was costing us as a premium. I don't know if that's true, but I think we've asked the same question for four years now and okay. haven't really got a clear answer. So I think to that and before, I know Chris is still on 39. Two questions for you on 38. But I think that is uh, that is information that would be helpful. You're relatively new, right. so uh, we're not asking that question of you repeatedly. No, no, uh, right. But I know the committee is is in this new this new group is looking to put a report together to come to council as a full report because we're past that five year mark, and I think that was kind of a threshold that yes. people were uh, talking about. And you have a new contractor, different contractor. Present, yes. Yeah. How, Initial impressions? Uh, so far, so again, he came on on July 1st. Um, we have a good open dialogue, um, and he's allowing us to be able to do some of this stuff on ourselves. So, again, saving middleman and purchasing, uh, conversations on um, when timelines. We've set up a maintenance schedule so we have it and we know. Uh, it's helping us communicate better with the school, and then also with our own staff, uh, having more ownership in the organic program so that when they're looking for, like today, we're working on the high school uh, batting cage and finding grubs and reporting that. And so it, it's, it's, it's coming. Good. I mean, last year you said it was going to save money. You think it saved money from where you were? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Then the two quick questions before Chris moves on. To, on, on. On the bottom of page 38, you talk about reconstruction of restroom facilities in the first and third level. Is that, but then it's not in the capital budget? Is that something that uh, is in the budget or not? Well, no, the, the it got pushed out. You'll see. Uh, at the last adjustment, it got pushed out, in the, I believe, in the capital improvement. Um, I, I did see it, the capital improvement. That, that's I was just looking for clarity. It's, it's here, but it is pushed out. It, so it got pushed out. It, the it last. is pushed out. Yes. That's the question, too. Can you talk a little bit in your capital improvements is what is a complete middle school athletic field renovation design study for $10,000? That's sure. Yep. Um, can I put this away? Are we done with the budget? No. Or my, oh, no. no. I just, it was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's going to start. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the challenges that we're finding um, since I've been here, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> one of the challenges that I've seen here, and part of the, the factors in the organic program is our fields get zero rest. They're, they're fully used, um, they're maximized in a lot of cases. And uh, one of the things that was brought to my attention when I first got here is um, our two middle school facilities. Um, we ship our JV team out to Willie Field um, because the middle school baseball field is not long enough in left field due to a vernal pool that's out in left field. And then on the softball side, um, uh, that field has room for expansion in the right field. Um, Two of our challenges, we can't rest fields because nobody wants to play on dirt. We paint lacrosse and soccer fields on those two facilities that none of the upper level teams want to play on because they don't want to transition from grass to dirt. Um, and so part of this theory is studying flip-flopping the two fields, and it may not cost that much, but um, flip-flopping the two fields, which will allow us to gain the distance on the existing softball field and right field to do two things. One, to fit a baseball field. Two, to have no impediment from dirt on the infield. You could have a full-size grass field, um, which will allow us then to rotate, for example, um, the middle school field right now. We're relocating practices to Wentworth and games to m the memorial field because of grub issues we're having right now. So to do that, we're, we're shifting people all over the place. Um, so this will allow us to get two full-size fields on grass. But why is it why is it a capital expense and not an operational expense? And why this year? I mean, we're we're in a tight budget cycle. So yeah. why is this the year uh, that? It's it's been an ongoing issue. Again, that's going to be choice of council as far as looking at the analysis of what we want to do uh, in this program. And so I felt this was a time to bring forward as we're getting pressure from use user groups and we shut down fields. Um, yeah. It's it was time to look at and okay. then put it into a long-term capital yeah I think part maybe part of the, the the help for the justification too would be looking at you know the cost of not doing it as well Meaning, are we going to are you going to have excessive field uh, use there or are you going to have uh, by not flipping it you said you're gonna you're gonna over utilize some of the other areas or? right well it's one it's gonna be diminished service as we mm -hmm. as we're dealing right now with with a grub issue mm -hmm. um, we've shut down fields and when we have maintenance to fields they're so pressured right now. We're rotating around. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just moved Ultimate Frisbee to the middle of the park for the season while we, we deal with that on. So there's no other facility to move those around mm -hmm. that meet mm -hmm. the high school standards. Mm -hmm. so. 
You good? You good? Yep. Uh, so, let's see. Moving on to page 41. Uh, similar issue on the rec programs you have uh, in your total staffing. You have two full-time, I'm assuming one at 60% and one at 70%. I should have fixed it. And 150 volunteers, but you got a wages and benefits line of 376,482. Yeah, that's not the that's same issue as same uh, issue as, as far as the translation from okay. document to presentation. Okay. Our apologies. Okay. Um, and I think you're gonna I think you're gonna address this like, with your with, when you do your breakout of programming. Yep. Um, but looking at budget drivers and recreational programs, you have a number of programs offered, and I, I just kind of went through some math real quick. You said um, I assume you mean an increase in number of programming is causing a lot of cost pressures, right? An, in, an increase in programming? Is that what you're referring to, number of programs offered? As far as budget yeah. driving, yes. Well, sometimes it's also when we talk about the concern for revenue driven, how do we offset mm -hmm. more? Right. We're limited to our outdoor space a lot of time. Right. So I think it's, it's, it's a positive and a negative as far as when we're looking at the number of programs we can offer versus what we are offering. So I, I, I did some of the quick math based on, on tab 4D, tab 9, which we don't need to go to. Um, but you had, uh, you offered 553 programs in 2017 versus 366 in 2016. That's an increase of 187 programs, if I read that chart correctly, with an increase in 1,087 participants. However, if you take out the 784 participants that you included for parking, um, that, if I'm reading this correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, yeah. You're looking at a total increase of 187 programs for 303 increased participants. Or am I am I misunderstanding how that chart's going? Well, I'm sorry. We're, yeah, we yeah, are going to have to look at the exhibit. Okay. Can yep. you just reference yep. it again, yeah. please? Yep. Uh, so 4D. So looking at your. Uh, page 17, 4D, yep. on tab 9. So again, I looked at your, if you go with the top programs, in 2016 you had 366, yep. 2017 you had 553. That's an increase of 187 programs. Yep. Then I looked at total participant at the very bottom of the line. You went from 45,962 to 47,449. So that's a difference of 1,087 participants, but you're also including daily beach parking in those participants. So I took those out because I okay. assume that that's not a program participant. So maybe I'm wrong there. Well, it's, it's just a revenue driver, depending on how you, which pool it goes into. Okay. Yeah, but go ahead. Yep. Um, so that means you increased a, a programming to 100 by 187 programs, but you really netted 303 participants. You follow what I'm saying? I do, and okay. I would have to double check with our rec track software because it counts them, the amount of people. It counts. You could do ten programs. Right, I, right. and that's why I need some clarification. Yep. I want. I want to make sure that I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I'm sure I'm misunderstanding that somewhere. Yep. Okay, um, clarification. But when you call out the number of programs offered versus the number of people you're impacting, right. I thought that was right. maybe a little disproportionate. So okay. maybe a little clarity on how that's being tracked or, or reported. Uh, okay, back to tab nine. I'm getting close, I promise. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm sorry, back to tab four. Tab four, page 43. Uh, 55 plus programming. Yep. Um, I know you're working with the Senior Program Advisory Board, but could you just highlight that a little bit and explain a little bit more what you guys are doing to work together to establish what programming sure. would be beneficial to them and yeah. absolutely um, their number one goal is to increase programming and offering of services at a reasonable rate to provide value uh, they're also cognizant of the the cost that goes along with it because we've been talking about that um, we're looking at our space issues as is our number one concern right now with the growth in our meal program at Martins Point where some days we have waiting lists for that program which is upset upset of the folks when they show up to have a meal um, so we started pre-registering to kind of get people to see what's going on um, 
We're working on our membership structure. What is the value in that? Um, where they pay ten dollars and get discount first registration. One of the complaints we've had from residents is, why is a member taking a spot from <coughs> a, res a resident? And so, so they're analyzing which way is best. It's either got to be one or the other. It's either got to be a resident, non-resident, or it's got to be a member, non-member. You can't overlap the structures. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, then you've just been looking at outreach. Um, We've had an increase in programming. Uh, Cindy, as our full-time senior uh, program coordinator, has done a great job um, researching, trying new trips, listening to the folks. Um, the meals have become, again, very popular. Um, transportation, uh, and then now it's just where do we hold space as far as I think that's going to be their next their next challenge. Any, anything on the horizon you could think of? Like, I mean, we, we put the... Um, the, the the courts down by uh, Memorial Park. Yeah, and we're still finishing that project. We're on schedule to um, have the nets installed for pickleball mm -hmm. this April, and then in May, once the temperatures get steady, they'll paint those. Um, we'll be installing a bocce court ourselves in the park. Presently, we've, uh, between pub the help of Public Works and our staff, we've installed uh, cement pads, but now holds two sets of cement cornhole boards and then two double tables. Um, that are lunch tables, but also have checkerboards in grade room. So that project is coming along. We should be wrapping that up in May. The only piece to still work through is the request for um, a shade structure. So we're looking at some different components, whether that's something that's a, a, a sales system that comes up and down each year, or is it a permit structure, cost versus maintenance versus quality of service. So. Okay. Uh, then uh, last two questions, yep. page uh, 44. Uh, bottom of uh, goals and priorities, yep. or sorry, bottom's goals of success and accomplishments. I, I know there's been a lot of uh, consternation lately about um, uh, before and after care, and yep. I just want some clarification. I, I, I and I heard this was done, but I just want confirmation from you that yep. there were refunds offered after the deadline based on changes that had happened to the final scheduling and things like that. Absolutely. Okay. So one of the improvements we did for child care this year and in, in, in a new service is we went to a full online registration process so people can do that from their homes now rather than having to come in. Um, and we, we opened our online registration based on the, the proposed schedule, knowing that there was potential for change. Um, and so once they decided they were going to make a change, we had that 10-day window where we didn't know what that was going to be. Uh, so we reached out to all the present users saying that if there's a refund that needs to be produced, we will do that or a credit. And then also they had first right of refusal to make changes. And so this past Monday, we opened it back up to everybody else that needed to fill in. So we took care of the folks that registered into the existing schedule and then moved into the new schedule. And that brings me to the last question. What were the limiting factors? I know there were some concerns, and I, I actually, in fairness, talked to Tom a little about this already, yep. um, in limiting the number of participants. Absolutely. Um, could you just address yep. that maybe a little bit as well? Absolutely. Um, presently, we're not state certified. That it comes with different factors for that, but we use their model as far as space per child. And um, presently, right now, our number one driver is space at each location. Um, Wentworth School is probably the most flexible school for us. Um, our middle school uh, has space, but that's also the smallest user group. Mm -hmm. Our outside 3K2 schools are the ones, especially Blue Point School. We have openings in morning care, but we're already booked in aftercare. And our single space is the multi-use cafeteria gymnasium. And so that dictates how many students we can hold at each location. So that's the driver and registration restrictions. The only solution is really to get into classrooms, and that's a conversation right. that has begun with the right. central office to see if that's an option for us. Can we hire a teacher to get into the room because they have exhibits and stuff set up for the next day, and we'll, so right. the challenges with that. But so we're, we are working on it. A absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before, before we move to Capital, just, just kind of a couple takeaways and one ask. So yep. as a takeaway, we'd like to see something that either comes back to the council at some point about what are we going to do about the Sinai Black Point Road or Oak Hill or whatever, what's the recommendation? Absolutely. That we're talking a big lump of cash coming with a long yep. return on investment. To give us an idea of the feedback about organics, when that's going to be. I, mean, yep. yeah, I know they're working on it, but we've heard that. It's not, not a reflection on you, but we've heard Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Nope. And then third, this budget is really complex to understand, as you can probably see by our questions. Absolutely. Can you come back to us? I would just, because your overall increase is at 4.3%, 
what what would you do if you had to get to a three percent budget? It's about thirty thousand dollars reduction. What would you do to get to a three percent budget for for community services? <coughs> okay. Trying to understand what's in there. What what would be at the margin that if we want to look to would have something to do. I mean, if, if we our commitment's three percent, so we're just trying to understand. That. Okay. Just to be clear, 4.3 is the gross uh, expenditure increase, as you as you just stated. The um, net, net increase is 1.49. Yep. Is the net that? the net increase to this budget is 1.49 when you add the revenue increases? Well, but but I mean the parking fees that were increased 50,000. Correct. You don't really have any more incremental cost for the increase in fees, so. Well, we will once, as far as staff, as far as offsetting right. revenue in, in the um, metering at, at Bay Point. What, 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 meter, what, what metering? Will you put more meters in? No, we observe those costs on that and staffing that's. Well, but from last year, you were doing the same thing, right? At, at, you, were, you still had parking fees, you were still doing all. I mean, Again, I, I, on your expenditure line, what would yep. it be to get a net increase in your expenditure line at 3%? Okay. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it more so. I mean, if you spend all the additional revenue you're getting, you're that, that's different. Year-over-year year cost, not uh, uh, gross expenditure or net expenditure? Gross. I just want to, I want to make sure I understand that because I thought so when we talk 3%, we are talking tax overall yeah. net you can, not expenditure. So you're talking about something else? No, no. I mean, I'm just... I'm the issue, are you... Well, yeah, I mean, I, what I'm talking about is every other budget we've looked at, this is coming in at net expenditure increase from last year of 4.3%. The net expenditure? The net is 1.4. No, it's 1.4. No, gross. 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 Right, but the net expenditure has 58000 of additional parking revenue. Right. Just fees going up. There shouldn't be, there's not costs going up. You're saying so that's a freebie. It should be the bottom line. It should. Right. So... All I'm asking is, what would it be to get the expenditure line to be at three percent? What is the trade-off? Just so we can consider it. That's all. Yeah, I don't know why you would want to do that. Inflation's two percent, two and a half percent. Well, so those, these lines are going up at four percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a question. It, you know, I, it, I don't understand all the cost yep. inflators that you have in here. Yeah, and we've gone through a lengthy discussion. We can continue that. Okay. It's just a question. We don't have sure. anything with it. Just a question. I can. The capital is capital expenditures. Quick, quick question for you. You've got on page three, tab tab six. Are we on projects, or I'm sorry, are we yes. on uh, capital equipment? Equipment. Equipment. Yep. So you've got on here two brand new pickup trucks. Yeah, one is a uh, one is a, a one-ton uh, plow truck, and one is a three-quarter pickup. Right. The uh, present presently we operate with two uh, one uh, one-ton pickup trucks. One has been out of service for the past yep. six weeks. It's been decommissioned, yep, rust and frame repair. Yep, I understand um, that. That's one as well. The other one though only has sixty thousand miles on it. Yep. And I guess the problem becomes just the timing of replacing sure. these both in one year. And this yep. is a hundred thousand dollars worth of expenditures. Understood. If, if the other truck only has 60,000 miles on it, it's about 15 years old, that's 4,000 miles a year. Can, can one of these be pushed? Can the, the one that can't be inspected needs to be replaced? Correct. But the other one, can you push that out of here? I think, um, in just in my short time here, I think anything can be pushed out. My reason for bringing this forward has been is um, Jay Nason down at Public Works has been pretty spot on with, we've seen an e increase in repair with that vehicle. Uh, we're having frame rust issues. Um, when we I didn't replace it, you only put. I mean, a plow truck is different. But you only put four thousand miles a year on it. Right. Part of that is 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 is, is moving our crews around as far as and keeping it on campus. So could we push it off? We could. Okay. And the eighteen thousand dollars for a new Walker bagger mower. Yep. Is that in addition to? I mean, that that's no. Is that replacing a John that, Deere? That's replacing our, our two thousand eleven John Deere. Presently on our larger um, mowers. Our side bagging unit, which is about $4,500 for a unit that's scheduled to be replaced in a couple of years, uh, has failed. And so part of our thought process that I was asked to do last year is look at what we're doing for contracted services, what we're doing for in-house. And so we looked at this unit as something that potentially could offset, one, it's a bagger, two, it's a narrower deck where it could do some of our smaller contracted islands that need to be cleaned up versus mowed. 
because um, it does have the pickup capability. So it would replace a, you know, it's a, um, well, it's just a regular rider, John Deere mower, that it would be replacing. And again, can that be pushed out of here because that comes out of appropriations? Uh, it, it could in the sense we would just need to fix the bagger, then we wouldn't have a bagger in our fleet, mm -hmm. which is about a $4,500 fix to the old unit. So. Okay. And then on. Uh, Step seven. Step seven. That's where I think you have the the. Um, Looking at projects now. Yeah. Yeah, projects, and that's where you've got the fourteen thousand dollar roof repair to fifty nine Black or twenty nine Black Road, Black Point Road. Yep. Uh, but what I was looking at is all the other stuff you've got queued out there, which. which sure. Answers that question. Yeah, absolutely. So going down that list, I mean. Um, We've had leakage and repair, and, and so it's again protecting our asset on uh, yep. Black Point Road. Yep. Going down into the um, the co-op parking lot, um, we've been working with the shellfish and the waterfront community to deal with some issues, challenges regarding trailer parking. Um, presently, we've got an agreement with Public Works and our our staff. We're going to be painting uh, those trailer uh, spots, um, but that parking lot is starting to show signs of, of need of crack repair, filling, um, and so what we've talked about with the committee is doing that internally and then contracting that out in the fall when we can shut down the parking lot to be crack sealed, <coughs> mastic applied, and then fully seal coated. It'll do two things. One, it'll allow us to do internal to see if our new configuration will work, and then before we put it down on a new set of seal, seal coating, uh, and that's being proposed to do out of reserve account jointly between the pair use and the beach reserve fund. Yep, there's a real button. Yep. The next two items are both studies. Hard, hard, herd park study for yep. 20,000. Yep. And middle school field renovation study, which we've already talked about. We've already talked about. Um, the herd park study um, would be looking at how we use that parking, but also redesigning that bathhouse. That's our biggest revenue maker, and we put the least amount of money and services into that. Um, presently, when we shut down a bathroom due to feces issues, we shut the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about how to improve and offer a better service to the greatest population of user at that beach. Um, so this money would be used to uh, look at restroom facilities, uh, potentially the concession stand, can we increase our, our profit from our, our leasing in that unit? And then also uh, with this fee structure, again, looking at the theory of automating things, do we make multiple entrances? Do we redesign the parking lot to handle that flow? We've got some drainage issue down in the, on the, on the um, on the southern side of that parking lot where it floods through the low spot. So we've got some parking issues that this would look at how to best serve that facility, which is our greatest revenue generator. Again, those are probably things that can be pushed out a year without a lot of consequences, right? Just level of service and, and, and putting out the project to fund it further out. Mm -hmm. okay. That's proposed to use uh, beach reserves? Correct. Beach, yeah. on, on what? Beach on that herd park study that, yeah. was to use beach reserves to do that analysis since that's what generates. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's our money maker. Yeah. Herd park is just by sheer volume of spaces we have to sell on a daily basis. That's where we make the majority of our money. Okay. So I, I want to thank you, Mr. Souza, for putting up with our our no, our, our uh, somewhat aggressive tactics. Um, yep. It's not a personal reflection from my perspective by any stretch of the imagination. It, it is a very complex issue and one that we've been working on for a, a, a sure. long time before you even got here. So well, I have a better understanding of of what you're looking for, yep. and I, I now that I'm getting a better understanding of facilities function and staff as well. So well, I, I commend you. You handled yourself very well. So I, I appreciate Thanks. the responses for sure. sure. Thanks, Doug. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> and we'll get those updates to you. Thank you. So, uh, administrative, we ready to jump in? Yeah. Uh, this uh, picks up the executive, town clerk, and human resources. So, just a couple of comments off the top, and I'll, I'll kind of go by the vision, if that's okay. Uh, the administrative line uh, does a couple things. We're moving really kind of a, a realignment. We've created a so-called technical division. It's aligned in the planning department under the leadership of Angela Budchett, the town engineer. And we're moving the sustainability coordinator under her. Uh, 
also a GIS technician will be there. We really want to uh, accentuate the fact that we've got a technical resources available to town departments, and so it's a benefit to our department in that we're moving the cost out. Uh, you'll talk to Mr. Chase, and you'll see him incurring some expense in that regard. Uh, there's also an adjustment for the assistant town manager to better reflect uh, her level of uh, competency and, and contribution to the organization. On the legislative, we saw a steep uh, dues increase for GP Cog. Uh, it was forever a uh, dollar per capita. It's gone up to a dollar sixty per capita, so wow. it's an eleven thousand dollar increase. Why? Can you say why? Because they can. <laughs> can. Well, yeah, because well I think can. really with the new executive director, uh, she had a keen eye to uh, what it's costing their operations, and frankly, uh, it had been long overdue. Um, under mm -hmm. her leadership, she she advanced it. We're not being treated any differently. All members of, of COG are being treated the same way. It doesn't make it any easier. Just as an aside, outside agencies, we've proposed funding for Project Grace, as we have in the past. No additional costs there, and certainly no one else. Under the benefits section, this is kind of a catch-all. Uh, we have first-time funding for the HRA. This is the health care for the fire department. Uh, we're funding it at a probably a higher utilization that will actually happen, but we don't know yet, so we need to be careful here. Uh, here we also include uh, so-called adjustments. It's provisions for selling a police contract that um, we'll be negotiating this spring, uh, and also merit increases for non-union staff. Also, uh, sick and vacation pays. Um, this is uh, for separate employment employees, typically through retirements. Um, we owe them sick, a portion of sick and vacation pay, and we've adjusted accordingly what we think we'll need this year. Uh, and then uh, insurance and risk management, we actually have good news with workers' comp. We're down about $35,000 based on our experience. And lastly, um, kind of high-level comment, the town clerk and elections, there's essentially no change. Tony's got a $5,000 change across all those divisions. So I'm pleased to to walk backward and, and to dive deeper in all of these pieces, uh, but I thought I'd just kind of provide those comments off the top. Um, I yeah. should say there's also revenue, if you want me to speak to that. You want to start, start with upwards? I, got, I, mean, I just have a few, yeah. fewer questions than I did for the other departments, probably because we're a little bit more familiar with, okay. with, with, this, with this group. Um, uh, page one on the executive summary here. Um, so you did uh, mention that a little bit before uh, about moving the uh, uh, sustainability. sustainability coordinator out of that, um, but the additions, the 129 401 increase in the wages and benefits line, were was to to what again? That was I know there was an increase in the assistant town manager. Um, wrapped in, and, wrapped and into that number is the uh, the so-called adjustments to settle a police contract, okay. uh, merit for non-union, okay, um, and second vacation payout. Okay. So that's not a recurrent cost, or that's kind of a one-time, or is that something that we'll see? I, mean, I would assume those, is that, is that a one-time requirement for that contract to pay out the end of the contract, or is that annually we're going to see that, that buy-up? No, we're in negotiation, so we okay. want to kind of hold our cards uh, close to our chest in yep. terms yep. of how we're going to, what the financial implications of year one are. Right. Okay. Uh, and the, so this number is a bit of a placeholder. I guess you'll okay. be distributed to the appropriate line when, okay. when that's settled. Yeah, understood. Uh, page uh, three. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how this broke up, but uh, page three and page four didn't have the full time breakouts or the staff breakouts, full time, part time, the boxes underneath total staffing breakouts. So um, I'm sure there wasn't really anything for for us for legislative, but administration. It was in the in the write up. It said four full time. Um, uh, there really should be three now. Okay. Uh, it would be myself, my assistant. Oh, Kim Morrison. Oh, Kim Morrison. I beg your pardon. So it's myself, uh, Larissa Collette, and Kim Morrison, the purchasing assistant. Uh, Larissa holds the title as purchasing director. So yes, we okay. are full time. All right. So I, and again, just for consistency, I don't know if it would be helpful to sure. add that box below it. That's you know, like we did yep. for each one that said total and part full time and part time. And yep, we'll do that. Um, and let's see. So um, in your budget drivers, you, you, you mentioned these already. You said an increase in the town manager's salary to better, new budget line to provide stipends for interns, and increase in GP COG. Um, 
but none of the none of the lines went up. Everything went down. So where were those changes reflected? That's because Cary Grantham was moved into planning. Yes. Okay. It's, right. the, it's the windfall benefit of, gotcha. okay. of removing those costs okay. to another, another okay. department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then uh, executive. Mm -hmm. a, again, I didn't see a, a breakout of, of actual employees. I know the council's under that. But the way I read this uh, really concerned me because it looks like the council's getting $975,765 in wages and compensation. And if that's the case, I need to renegotiate my contract because I'm <laughs> really getting abused here. So I, I just, I, and I'm sure there's an explanation where I just, I couldn't tell from that sheet how that was broken down and what that line was for. Yeah. I'm going to look to Ruth. Could you help add some clarity there, Ruth? If I could, too, as a little bit of a something I probably should have said at the beginning of this, but tab four and tab 10 kind of go hand in hand. So if you see, for example, much this probably won't work, but if you were to look on page three of tab four, it says administrative and it says a total proposed budget of 471,000. Yes. If we go to tab 10 and we look at Total administration manager and administration. It's on page three. The, to the totals should jive, so you can see what makes up those numbers okay. by by section, if you will. So tab ten, page three. You'll see that four seventy one nine zero six. Okay. It's kind of in blue. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope the colors are consistent, but I'm not one hundred percent sure they will. Yeah. And I did pick up okay. a, a really good helpful comment. I think here on these pages we ought to indicate what's included as well, as opposed to people flipping back. So that's a good yeah. format improvement we can make. Okay. So then I'm sorry, I forgot what the original question no, was. The nine seventy five seven six five. So that would be under legislative insurance. So I go to tab ten. And page go five. To I'm sorry? It's on page five. Page five, okay. Um, and we look at where is the legislative is. Where so it includes the benefits, which are uh, has to do with the vacation. Actually, all of benefits is part of that, I believe, or most where, of it. Where is it on this? On, on, I'm sorry. On page five. Time. Page five. It yep. says the first section says benefits. Yep. Five, seven, yep. And that's 579000 Below yep. that is risk management. Okay. But that totals out to 1.19, and we're at, we're just at, I'm just looking, the and only thing that struck me were the wages and benefits, so. I'm right, and that includes, so some of this. We'd have, I'd have to break that out in here somewhere. Correct. Okay. So it's included in the grand totals, the 1,337,000 is there, so portions of the insured deductibles and insured payments is not part of wages and benefits, it's. Part of contracted services, probably. I think if you don't look at the word wages on that particular page, and we, because we group everything by wages and benefits, yeah. we could on page four of tab four, you could just read that as benefits because that's your workers' comp and your other risk management. So there are no there are no people being paid out of that line. It's townwide benefits that are applied across departments. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's, it's really a function of trying to. I, I bring all these individual line items into five standard accounts across yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. all. Yep. And, and, and I, I, something's I just, lost in translation. For right, sure. right. Clarif I just clarification is always good. Yeah, it's always, it's always a positive thing. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Last question I had was page eight, tab four, page eight. Um, two questions. I'm clerk's office. Um, oh, no, sorry, just one question here. Um, level of activity, one of the budget drivers was FOA requests. Mm -hmm. What is the level, current level of activity for FOA inquiries? Is it, is it I, I know it's subjective, but is it, is it manageable? Is it something that we need to, do we need more staffing? Is it something that's becoming excessive? Well, I've added the responsibility to the town clerk, so mm -hmm. she has a full-time job to begin with. I, I think right now it's manageable. I think she would say that. Uh, last year, I think she would have disagreed with that, mm -hmm. really as a function of a single individual requesting mm -hmm. things repeatedly. So mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, I think it's manageable, and it is right now. Okay. All right. That could change tomorrow. We could have a FOIA request that uh, is extremely time-consuming. But yeah. um, it's 
Um, and then last question, page 10, under elections, benefits and driver, uh, budget drivers, election staff needed per size of election. Um, I thought when we had did, we, we had done, or a group of the subset of the council had done a review of election practices. One of the things that came out was um, a, a, I want to say a desire to do electronic, more electronic counting or something that I thought was going to have impacts on the cost of the election. Um, and, but I don't see that reflected here, which I'm not complaining about. I just, I don't know if, if we're going to implement those changes and those were costs or if Tony's found a way to absorb those costs and we're just going to move through with those, those changes and they don't have an impact. Let me confirm with her and I'll, I'll okay. report back. But uh, Tony is very accurate and fastidious. I yep. no have every reason to believe that she's accurately uh, budgeting for what she expects. Yep, yep, sure. And that's all I have. Yeah, Tom, just a quick question on page four. Mm -hmm. Like contract and service in page four, is that where JP Cog is? Or JP Cog? Or what is that $26,000? Under the page four, where contract and services. JP mm -hmm. <coughs> um, Cog would be here, yes. So that uh, 11 five of that should be attributed to there. And I think the other must be made up. Um, 11, 11, five is a variance. That's how much it went up. Is that that's how much it went up for GB. 11, five, three. Okay. No, excuse me. 11, three, five, one. So what's the, and what's the I other? I suspect the, 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 other the rest of it might be the balance of the insurance costs. Uh, I think it's uh, Project Grace, maybe. Well, that should, should be no increase there. Increase, right? No, there, there should be no increase. Oh, we're looking at the increase. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Is it? I think it's the uh, uh, under the benefits. I think it has to do with some of the uh, flexible spending, flex admin yeah, fee, the HRA admin fees, things of that nature. Maybe. Since we've had so many questions on this page four, let us. Rework this and provide and make sure that what's being shown here uh, is reflective, and we can give you a breakdown of what makes up each of those numbers. Yeah, that's great. Something okay. seems to yeah. miss. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. 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 No capital. Uh, there's one slight change. I think Tony would like me to mention. There's a state law change. Um, as I understand it, uh, the law. Historically, has been where a person um, uh, passes uh, the death certificate is issued. Now it can be issued from either that location, locale, or where they reside. And so there's a, a notable decrease in notary fees. Um, I think uh, to the tune of five thousand uh, dollars attributable to that state law change. Well, looking at your cover page, that's a little disturbing because we had 124 births but 1,022 deaths. So, does that create yeah. a, a, a large burden on her on her department? It's a reduction of five thousand uh, dollars in her to in the budget. Or, it's a reduction because well, oh, because they're not they don't she have to be just have to notarize right. as many. She's just not going to be notarizing, so okay. therefore not collecting the fees. Okay. Okay. And I. I, I religiously read the obituaries every day. It's mm -hmm. shocking to me. Uh, not too many days go by where there's not someone from Scarborough, uh, I guess, due to our health care facilities and right. age of our population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, everybody. And public comment. Any want to make public comment? Does it close out? Are you? Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for your questions and thanks for all our questions. Did you want to go through? Uh, you can, yeah. I mean, uh, the, as, as we close out, the, the next the, the next schedule is Tuesday, April 17th, 6 to 8. It'll be finance, assessing, planning, police, fire, and EMS. On the 25th, 6 to 8, will be MIS, library, and SEDCO. May 1st, 6 to 8 will be a joint finance committee meeting um, on the school budget. Um, and Tuesday, May 8th, 6 to 8, will be sort of, we'll work up our final recommendations for the, for the budget to take to the council. Can I just flag one thing? April 25th, uh, that is likely to be a date the council will be um, uh, that's right. 
elsewhere, yes. holding the recall um, public hearings. Mm -hmm. So we are working diligently to find an alternative date that date. week, and we'll yeah. shop that around with you as well. So. Um, Good luck with that. And yeah. we're also going to want to shift if, depending on the date, library has requested to go first. We'll sort that through. Yeah. Yeah. Can I offer some good news in closing? Please. Uh, Ruth was kind enough to advise me uh, the main state revenue sharing numbers came out. Uh, we had budgeted uh, holding that line the same. And we'll actually receive about $38,000 more this year than was expected. So that's certainly oh, that's great. good Excellent. to the bottom that's line. Good. Why would you say 38? 38,522. Good. Yep. Very nice. Nice. I guess that with a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you.